Neogen takes great care to ensure the integrity of the data we collect from many sources across the country. As these data can vary widely, they should not be considered typical of all grain harvested. The mycotoxin levels we report are intended to assist our industry partners in developing their risk assessment programs. Detecting problems before commingling or processing can help avoid quality issues and financial losses. Welcome to the Monday Mycotoxin and Crop Report for September 12th, presented by Neogen, a world leader in providing solutions for food and animal safety. This week's headlines, spring wheat and barley harvests race toward completion. Updated reports of Don in Canada. Higher aflatoxin report in Texas corn. The Brock Report. Seasonal to slightly above average temperatures were the rule in the majority of grain growing areas last week. Hurricane Hermine brought heavy rains to northern Florida and most of the eastern seaboard. Rainfall was moderate in most other parts of the country. Wet areas have delayed some field work. The forecast for the rest of this month calls for slightly warmer than normal temperatures east of the Mississippi and in most western states. Buoyed by warm temperatures, the spring wheat harvest stands at 91%, well ahead of the five-year average. Coincidentally, 91% of barley has been harvested, also ahead of the five-year average. Bumper crops have filled bins, making temporary storage necessary, and meaning quality management will be key to marketing grain this year. We have a new report of Don and Wheat coming from Canada to go along with previous reports from these seven states. Reports of Don and Barley have come in from one Canadian province and three states. The USDA Crop Bulletin shows the percentage of corn in good to excellent condition fell by one point, and that corn in poor to very poor condition remained the same. 96% of corn has reached the dough stage, and 76% has reached the dented stage. Corn maturity stands at 18%, a bit behind normal. Heat units remain above average in most crop growing regions, and particularly in Tennessee and the Carolinas. The orange and red sections in the drought map indicate pockets of concern. By this time of year, additional rain in corn growing regions affected by drought will not diminish the aflatoxin risk. Continued warm and dry weather will accelerate harvest. Cooler temperatures with some moisture will slow field work. The forecasted bumper corn crop means that the number and size of ground piles will grow. Low prices will prevent farmer selling, leading to corn and outside storage, which can bring increased toxin risks over a period of time. We have a new, higher confirmed report of aflatoxin in new crop corn in Texas of greater than 150 parts per billion, up from 135 parts per billion. Other reports of aflatoxin have come from Kansas, Georgia, Oklahoma, Alabama, South Carolina, and North Carolina. We also have reports of fumonisin in corn in Texas and Oklahoma. Now, with this week's Brock Report, Kurt Barth filling in for Richard Brock. With the Fed contemplating an interest rate increase, the U.S. dollar has been reacting to every nuanced remark made by a Fed governor ahead of the September meeting. Our first chart today shows the relationship between the CRB index, a basket of commodities, and the dollar. While this includes many non-ag commodities, clearly as the dollar goes up, the commodity prices retreat and vice versa. This is somewhat true for ag commodities, but each commodity is not created equal when it comes to its sensitivity to the dollar. The second chart shows the percent of the U.S. crop of corn, soybeans, and wheat that get exported. In the case of wheat and soybeans, nearly 50% of the crop is exported, so they are far more sensitive to the dollar's price swings. However, this still doesn't tell the whole currency story. The dollar index is a basket of just six currencies in which the Brazilian real is not included. Since our main export competitor for soybeans is Brazil, the dollar's relationship to it is just as important as the dollar index. The third chart shows that the real has been strengthening against the dollar recently, giving us a boost when competing with Brazil for export sales. Bottom line is that wheat prices are the most sensitive of these three to the dollar index, soybeans a bit less so, and corn the least sensitive to the dollar price swings. Neogen is excited to announce that Reveal Q Plus Max for aflatoxin, the first in a new line of quantitative water-based tests, has now received GYPSA approval. Have a terrific week!